a occurrence happening in Judea and Israel at the time that Jesus walked on the earth and that he went up on a mountaintop and when he had gotten his disciples together he spoke to them in a way that they had never heard before the people were so amazed because they had followed him and they had heard his teachings and seen his miracles but they hadn't really heard him put it all together in one lump sum of what he was saying and in one day Jesus of Nazareth Jesus whom some were calling the Messiah Jesus became the ultimate cult yeah really he was a cult leader because what he declared he's saying to you and me today is that he becomes a very cultic type personality because he's not saying that you should follow the law he's not saying you should follow the Bible he's saying I say unto you he is doing the one thing that everyone says you cannot do you cannot take personal authority over the scripture but Jesus does because you see in Matthew chapter 5 through 8 more or less because sometimes chapters run together we find what's called the Sermon on the Mount and Jesus makes a lot of statements but he says that you have heard it said but I say unto you and as we listen to what he says we realize wait a minute Jesus is declaring himself the authority he's declaring himself as the declarative person that if you follow this I am saying to you and so we read in the end of the Sermon on the Mount a very interesting warning a very interesting statement he says these sayings of mine if you do them then you'd be likened unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock and when the storms of life came it stood so you can prove if these sayings of mine are true because are you destroyed has your house been torn down have you lost your faith as it were have you completely found yourself in something that you didn't get all you wanted to be because somehow the purpose and plan that you thought God had for you wasn't what you wanted and your house collapsed because Jesus said if you don't do these sayings of mine then you're like a man who built his house upon sand and the storms of life came and his house collapsed so Jesus is making a very interesting bold statement that was shocking to the people because even as they heard it they said for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes the people were astonished at his doctrine this is the most amazing radical thing that you can imagine so today are we looking at a religious idealist when he says these things in line I'm telling you to do are we looking at a pie-in-the-sky idea that says oh you know this is like you know kind of like a philosophy that we should follow you know and maybe come up with a nirvana feeling inside where we're like oh this is like human love and we're just gonna all kumbaya the moment or is Jesus giving a very blunt, very adamant, very earth-shattering, religion-starting statement that is going to shock you to your core because you have to follow exactly what Jesus said and do as he says. The question is up to you. What will you do with what Jesus said? As you look at it, as we have been examining this in our devotional, as our devotional, we have to determine does he mean what he says since he says it very bluntly and he means it very bluntly and he has already said and explained it very openly we're finding out yes and as we looked at last time blessed are those who are or blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake we now look at rejoice oh wait a minute okay we're blessed first of all for being persecuted or reviled because of 
his name's sake because we call ourselves by his name and especially by the fact that it's a false accusation against us whatever they do because of his name but then he says rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted the they the prophets which were before you wait a minute in verse 12 he's saying rejoice and be exceedingly glad i don't think so god you see i'm a christian and i have certain rights and privileges so if someone persecutes me and reviles me and someone says all manner of evil against me i'm not going to rejoice i'm going to go after them i'm going to defend myself i'm going to attack them and i'm going to get even but that's not what jesus is saying is it he already said you're blessed if that happens you're oh so thrilled why are you thrilled by it why is it a bracha why is it a blessing why is it something that god says hey my holy spirit when it comes upon it i will make this a blessing for you why how what hmm because the prophets so too when they spoke the word of god suffered like you but what did they do did they call down fire and wipe them out when god said to did they call down armies of angels to do according to what you know god had said that he would protect his prophets to do some they did but what did jesus say here rejoice and be exceedingly glad because he didn't say he would deliver you he said they did the same to the prophets so jesus is declaring in this last what a lot of times people break up into sections and portions of the beatitudes is that you can be really glad wait a minute i'd have to be a masochist to be glad because i'm getting beat up guess what you're not getting beat up you're being made likened unto the prophets and in the same way that the prophets received a great reward so too will you because they've done the same thing to the prophets and god blessed them did they die yes and you'll find later that in this Sermon on the Mount, in this declaration of this cult leader, Jesus, that he may ask you to die for him. Or he may ask you to take up your cross and be crucified with him. And as we look at the Sermon on the Mount, we find that this isn't this isn't that simple, is it? Uh uh. This isn't that, you know, like kinda like I can just, you know, set this aside, you know, and go ahead and do my own thing and go to church and sit in my pew and be happy and content and do what I do come to church with me it's okay come to church with me we'll just pray come to church with me we'll just say everything except what Jesus said which is what you're persecuted you're reviled for his name's sake you are one of those who are like the prophets because you are reviled falsely now if they have an accusation against you correctly you're in trouble and you will suffer the consequences of your own actions and you will pay in this life for what you have done but if it's a false accusation are you told to protect yourself are you told to go to the judge are you told to call down fire from heaven? What is Jesus saying here? What has he said to you today? Rejoice! Wait a minute! Rejoice? Are you kidding me? Did you see what they did to me? Do you realize what happened? Do you know how much money I lost? Do you know how much reputation is gone? Do you realize that, hey, it all happened to me? Let me read that again. Rejoice. And. Wait a minute. There's an and. Be exceedingly glad. <laughs> Are you a blithering idiot about it? Have you become so heavenly minded? You're all earthly good. Is God able to use you to accomplish his purpose? Because you see. Jesus walked on water. And he said to the storm, peace, be still. And it was. Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate. And he said, hey, you know, 
if I really wanted to get out of this situation, I'd call down, tell my father, and he'd send down angels and just wipe it all out. But this is meant to be. So, if he had this authority and ability, and he could have delivered himself, did he? No. So Jesus is becoming the most radical individual and something separated that him from any other person in the universe. He's willing to die for his faith, but not just as a martyr, but for the salvation of even his enemies. Wait a minute. Let me get this right. Jesus dies for even his enemies? We'll see that. But in the meantime, what are we told to do today as we read this? What exactly is he meaning here? Do we understand what he's saying? Do we understand the meaning? I mean, is it confusing or somehow we can make this into an interpretation where it's like, well, after the fact we can rejoice. Maybe down the road we can rejoice. Maybe later we'll be exceedingly glad. Or did he say, blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Did you know that there's men of God today that don't pay attention to all the gossip? They ignore all the labels that are put on, all the new age ideas that they're thrown at them and see if it sticks to them and if they react to it and if they're angered or if they're beat up by it or if they're put down by it or if they think that they have to have a reputation that is unsullied and perfect before God. No. What are they doing? Can I give you a hint? Anyone that really knows Jesus that walks with him today that knows what Jesus said, that is following hard with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength after what Jesus did, much less what he said, and how he lives in us today, is causing us right now to think about what people say about us. To say, you know, Lord, have you seen the way they've been doing that to me? <laughs> have you seen what they call me? <laughs> Have you realized how stupid it is what they're saying? <laughs> that's dumb. And that's why they rejoice and are exceedingly glad. Because they know the reality of what God said to them. And they know what they know because they know who they know. Do you know what Jesus said today? Do you know what Jesus said? What is Jesus saying to you today?